What's up, guys? I have a very interesting story to share with you. A story to share with you about a wild women's basketball game that took two days to finish. The game featured literal fireworks and a heartbreaking injury. It had it had just about everything. It had the the theatrics, the drama, and this game. For this game, there was a competition for a championship. So you had championship implications on the line. Lots of stuff uh, in this one game. Now, what game am I talking about? Am I talking about the WNBA? No. Am I talking about women's college basketball in America? No. I'm talking about European basketball where uh, the wildness sort of took, took, took effect. We had two of the best teams in Europe um, with some of the best players in the world on those teams. Uh, and it was a wild game with a very anticlimactic ending. Um, that was a scene at this year's Super Cup Women in 2024. So guys, let's talk about it. Quida loves sports. It is in the name. What is up, awesome people of the internet? Let's talk about the wild event that was Super Cup 2024. Now, just to sort of set the stage about what Super Cup is, Super Cup is a opening, usually an opening event for European women's basketball each year, uh, where we see the previous year's Euro Cup women champion and the Euro League women champion go head to head against each other. If you don't know, in Europe, um, uh, European women's basketball, the first tier is EuroLeague. Um, this, this feature is the best European teams. Um, and the second tier is Euro Cup. Um, so best teams, EuroLeague, second best teams, Euro Cup. And then, and then we have national leagues that sort of, uh, intersperse with that. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the teams that play in Euro Cup and EuroLeague also play in domestic leagues in their respective countries, like Turkey, um, Britain, et cetera. Um, but, but yeah, the, the top, top of the tippy top play in Euro league and Euro cup. So for super cup, they come together. So the winners of both of the previous year come together to find out who rules Europe. Is it the best league in the a league in a it, league is it the best league in the continent or is it the second best league? Usually it's always the, the best league <laughs> who, who wins. Um, now this tradition um, really does kick off uh, the season. Um, you know, we see the previous winners go head to head. Uh, and for the second time in a row, Fenerbahce comes out of EuroLeague on top. Uh, so on October the 2nd, Fenerbahce geared off to face against Beskitis, uh, who had a fantastic season with Euro Cup. And Beskitas made their Super Cup debut um, in last week's game. So the stage was set. On both teams, you have some new faces and a lot of returning faces. Most notably for Fenerbahce, they add Gabby Williams to their squad. Uh, Gabby Williams, if y'all don't know, she played for the, the Seattle Storm this year. And for Beskitas, they added Seattle Storm's rookie and UConn. Um, uh, star Nika Mule. So Nika Mule, as y'all know, she did not have that much playing time uh, for for the uh, Seattle Storm this year. She scored her first point in the last game of the season. Um, so she didn't have the best of rookie year. She learned a lot, but she didn't get a lot of playing time. And so this 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 time overseas really was her opportunity to really show what she could do and show the the immense talent that Nika Mule has. So they kick off the game. Uh, with a couple points, right? So Besquita scores, Fenerbahce scores, and then all of a sudden, this happens. Another firework there thrown onto the court. That will damage the court. But that is a very brave official here grabbing hold of the flare and removing it from the court. And goodness me, what awful scenes. Come back to the locker rooms until the uh, situation can be resolved. Safety of players and officials is the number one concern right now. Yep, I think they're going to send all teams back to the locker rooms, get them out of the way while the uh, unnecessary and silliness from the fans here is dealt with. The players are making a hasty retreat to the locker rooms and it really is sad. The officials are making their way back to their changing rooms as well until security. So guys, we are barely two minutes into this game. 
uh, that, that is taking place in Istanbul, Turkey. And fireworks, literal fireworks, are thrown onto the court by fans in attendance. Play stops. Players move to the locker rooms. There is some hope that play will resume, but security could not get the situation under control, and the game was suspended for the day. Uh, FIBA eventually released a statement saying, regarding Super Cup Women 2024 game between Beskitis and Fenerbahce, uh, the 2024 Super Cup women game between Beskitis and Fenerbahce in, in Istanbul today was suspended two minutes into quarter one because of fans' behavior in the stands. After consultation with the leadership of both, both clubs and taking in, into consideration the safety of the players and team delegations, FIBA Europe has, de has decided that the game will resume at the same venue tomorrow. Thursday, October the 3rd, um, but behind closed doors and without fans present. So that's what they released, and they did just that. We move the game to the next day, and we see both teams take the court and to play in relative silence. No real excitement after a big play. Uh, no real fanfare after the final whistle uh, was had because there were no fans in attendance it kind of felt kind of eerie and it kind of felt a little bit similar to um the wobble if you all remember that for the WNBA um during COVID where the WNBA went to Florida to to play their season and they and it wasn't a crowd you know you would hear you literally could hear the players on the court talking yelling at each other all this stuff because there was no fan noise to sort of drown all that stuff out uh, but one thing is for, for sure, uh, this was a very, very competitive game, especially in that first half. Uh, with the underdogs, Beskitsis actually leading Fenerbahce at the half, 37-33. to 33. Now, uh, right from the get-go, it was clear, guys, that Nika Mule was made for European basketball. Guys, in, this, in three quarters, Nika Mule had 11 points, shot three for four from the three-point line. She had nine assists, and her team was only losing by five in the third quarter. Uh, but then something bad happens. Drives inside. Should have gone to the bucket. Looked to pass Ed. Oh, no. Mule's on the floor in pain. And a lot of pain on the floor holding her left knee. Oh, that is not what we like to see. That is heartbreaking. It really is. Mule in a lot of pain with her left knee right now. Lovely sportsmanship there from Gabby Williams staying with her. Apologies if you find any of this distressing. Usually, obviously, it would be drowned out by the noise of the crowd. But Nika Mule steals the basketball, which is a good thing. But when she, uh, when she's jumping down, like she, she's in the air, when she comes down, so she jumps down and she is immediately in pain. Her teammates... And Gabby Williams, her her Seattle Storm teammate, surround her and as they hope that this injury isn't as bad as it looks, because we all know that non-contact injuries usually are really horrible. Um, Nika Mule is eventually taken off the court on a stretcher, and game play eventually resumes. Um, and the game ends with Fenerbahce on top, winning. Uh, the Super Cup for the second time in a row. Fenerbahce uh, has become only the third club in history of the Super Cup to win two times. Uh, they join uh, Ekaterinburg, which is a very, very popular, um, or it used to be popular Russian team. It featured a lot of WNBA players. Ekaterinburg won the Super Cup four times. 2013, 2016, 2018, 2019. Um, Ekaterinburg... I'll list some of the names of the players who play for Ekaterinburg. Uh, lots of very, very talented players. Um, also, uh, Spartik uh, won the Super Cup twice. Spartik is a, also a Russian team that had a lot of um, Americans on that team as well. Now, overall, this was a very, very low-scoring game. Um, and I kind of chalked that up to a couple things. Uh, one, due to rust of the players. Mm -hmm. Uh, just sort of getting back and acclimated with their teams and um, and teams just not playing defense. Guys, this was the first, really the first game of the season. or it's not, not even actually considered the first game of the season. This is just the first game before the season actually really started, really, really kicked off for European basketball. And so uh, teams are rusty. Players are rusty. 
Uh, there's a, a significant amount of players who are coming back from uh, playing in the WNBA, and so they got tired legs. So it's it's a whole bunch. So so yes, uh, why you may look at this score, this final score, and say, wow, that was very low scoring. Um, the scoring will pick up. It's primarily because players are either tired or rusty, and also, you know, defense too. For Fenerbahce, Gabby Williams had an all-around impact on the squad, both on the offensive and defensive end. She ultimately scored 11 points, 7 rebounds, set, uh, 5 assists, and she also won the 2024 Super Cup MVP. Emma Mieseman had 14 points, six rebounds, four assists. Uh, if you all don't know, Emma Mieseman is a Belgium uh, post player who played in the WNBA. She played for both the Washington Mystics and the Chicago Sky. Um, she's a player who has opted for the last uh, year uh, to not return to America. Uh, to play in the WNBA. We also had Turkish guard and Dallas Wings player Sevgi Uzun, who had 15 points for Fenerbahce. Um, a thing to note is that um, is that Fenerbahce literally has all the stars. We're gonna go through the list of the players who play for Fenerbahce, but but like it's it's a it's a lot of top notch players uh, in the world who play for Fener. Uh, for Beskitas, we had uh, Clea Hillsman who had a double-double with 18 points and 10 rebounds. And as I said earlier, um, Nika Mule really did have a good uh, first three quarters of the game before she ultimately went out due to injury. Now, uh, after word of Nika Mule's injury spread, there was a lot of wondering about what specifically was wrong with Nika. Unfortunately, it was confirmed and announced that Nika Mule suffered an ACL and meniscus injury. And the team eventually released a statement saying, Nika Mule, who suffered a rotational injury in her left knee during the Super Cup women's final play, uh, final played by, uh, played by our women's basketball team against Fenerbahce, was diagnosed with a ACL and meniscus injuries in the MRI performed at a local hospital. So guys, that's, that's what happened. ACL and meniscus, terrible situation for a player like Nika Mule, especially a player who did not play that much in the WNBA, goes overseas, and was actually balling for Beskitas uh, until she went down with injury. Uh, well wishes have been pouring in from the entire basketball world, uh, especially from UConn players. Yeah, I talked to Nika before practice, um, before she got the news, um, just talking to her, being there for her. I know she's got a great support system here. Um, and I know the journey ahead of her is not going to be easy, but if there's anything about Nika, I know that she'll crush it. Um, and that she'll just want to destroy the entire rehab and, and coming back process, um, or whatever that looks like. Um, but definitely, I mean, it's the worst. You don't wish injuries on anybody. Um, we got a whole crew here praying for her um, and just, Obviously, it's devastating, but we just want to be there and just be present and be there to support her. And the thing, again, that really, really sucks about uh, Nika Mule and what happened is that this was her first overseas pro game, and she was balling in this game. On October the 4th, uh, she posted on Instagram saying, Anyone that knows me knows I work my blank off all the time. This time isn't going to be any different. I appreciate all the love and support uh, uh, so much y'all really make this easier for my heart I am grateful for all the people around me that are true testaments of what belief and perseverance can achieve after being denied hooping this is just another opportunity for me to compete this time against myself not to be cocky but that's an easy w so uh, it's really awesome that Nika Mule is in good spirits. I'm very, very happy to hear that. Um, and she is still with her team during her injury. Uh, Best Kitsis uh, begins Euro Cup play tomorrow on October the 10th against uh, GEAS. Uh, you can watch the game live on YouTube. I will, I will link the link 
to the video in the comments. The good thing about European play, I know a lot of people have asked questions about it. Um, there's a good amount of European play that you can actually watch live. Um, so that's that's awesome. Not all of the games, and in fact, a, a good amount of the games will not have a commentator. So you're just be, you'll just be watching with the sounds of the game. Um, so so that's something to note. Uh, there won't be a commentator for all the games, uh, for a, at least for a, a decent amount of games. Um, but you can at least watch the games happen. And I will link it in the description below. So if you're wondering who is on this team with Nika Mule, well, let me just kind of go down the list of the players who play for Beskitsis because you will find some very, very familiar names. All right, so for Beskitsis, we have Dana Evans of the Chicago Sky. She has played for Beskitsis for several years now. Uh, we have Nika Mule, as I said earlier, this she, she's a rookie. It's her first year playing uh, overseas pro basketball, her first year with um, Beskitsis. We also have Timmy Fag Benlay. Timmy Fag Benlay, if y'all don't know, she played uh, this season, this past season in the WNBA for the Indiana Fever. She also is a player who um, played for the London Lions last year in, in European play. Now for Finner Banche, they do begin EuroLeague play today on October the 9th against Villanueva. Uh, that game can also be watched live on YouTube. I will also include that link in the description. And for the players for Fenerbahce, you will again see some uh, recognizable names, including Gabby Williams of the Seattle Storm, Tina Charles of the Atlanta Dream, Sevgi, Sevgi Uzen with the Dallas Wings, Ariel Atkins with the Washington Mystics, Emma Mieseman, formerly of the um, Emma Mieseman, formerly of the Chicago Sky, um, now just of Belgium national team. Nicolina Milic, formerly of the Minnesota Lynx. This year, she did not play in the WNBA. Julie Aleman, also, she did formerly play for the Chicago Sky. Now she does not play in the WNBA. So guys, that's the news. That is the news. I wanted to just go over that, the game that was a uh, Super Cup Women 2024. It was pretty wild. It's a pretty wild game um, with, uh, with, Results that don't really mean much um, because, again, this is just the start of European play. And, um, you know, it, it, it does not mean anything towards the season. It's just a random cup that happens um, before the season really does kick off. Again, uh, European basketball starts this week. And it's very, very much exciting. Euro League starts. Euro Cup starts. Uh, we got a lot of, of international basketball starting soon. Uh, the Chinese Basketball League is about to be starting soon. Um, and I will keep you all covered about everything you all need to know. I will be doing a video this week talking about every WNBA player who is going to be overseas, where they're going, what they're going to be doing, all that good stuff. I'm going to tell you where you can find these European games, where you can find uh, the Chinese games. There's a lot of basketball that is going to be had, um, not just in America with college women's basketball that's about to be starting pretty soon, but also we have European basketball. And with the rise of um, women's basketball in, in, uh, in America, you all, there's a lot of y'all who want to pay attention to where these players are going and what they're doing overseas. And I will make sure to keep you all as informed as I possibly can. So make sure to subscribe to this channel if you all want to stay up to date with what's happening in European play, what's happening in international play overall, and just anything that's happening around women's basketball worldwide. Uh, guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. And hopefully you all um, appreciated the commentary. Hopefully you all appreciated the news. If you did, please let me know by hitting that like button. Really does help to help the channel out a whole lot. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I make content all about women's basketball. So if that is your interest, make sure to subscribe here. Um, we also do have channel membership. So if you do want to join the channel and get your comment highlighted every time, every time you post, you can absolutely make sure to do that. And uh, shout out to the folks on Patreon who are actively supporting this channel every single month. Guys, uh, that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.